All right, good afternoon. My name is Barry Bennett. I am an instructor here at Karis Bible College in Woodland Park, Colorado. And I am going to be with you for a few moments answering some questions from last week's live Bible study uh, with Andrew Womack and Carrie Pickett. And let me remind you tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain Time, Andrew will be here with Carrie. They will be doing another live Bible study uh, tonight at 6 o'clock. Uh, they're able to take live questions at that time. I cannot take live questions right now. So I am taking some leftover questions from last week. And uh, we're going to do the best we can with those. Last week, Andrew taught a, a really great Bible study on 1 Corinthians 13 and, and love and the love of God. And so we want to look at some questions dealing with that. And uh, I hope that's a blessing to you. So our first question is from Mandy Samaru on chat. Uh, when you're dealing with an unbelieving family member, how do we explain and express the love of God when they won't listen to the Bible? All right, well, love can transcend, though for a Christian we understand love is God is love and we understand the context of the Bible, but a lot of unbelievers just need to be loved with the love of God through us, through people, uh, before they're going to become attuned to the Bible, we'll say. Uh, one thing that we can do, and one thing I, I like to teach on a lot is the prodigal son. The prodigal son says after he had taken his inheritance and gone off and wasted it on riotous living, uh, he finds himself living with pigs or feeding pigs and desiring to even eat what the pigs were eating. And there's a verse that says, and when he came to himself, this is in Luke chapter 15, when he came to himself, that's a powerful thing. Uh, when I pray for loved ones or when I pray for anyone who's lost, I'm going to pray they have that transcendental moment of coming to themselves, of waking up. There is a spiritual awakening that took place in me, that took place in many that are now born again, where all of a sudden the light comes on uh, and you begin to see things as you never did. You begin to understand there's a spiritual dimension to life. And so in, in praying for loved ones, praying that they would come to themselves there are some powerful testimonies I've heard of people in very desperate lifestyle situations. And I won't go into detail, but I'm thinking of one particular instance of someone who in the kitchen, grabbing hold of the refrigerator, came to himself and said, what have I done? What have I done? And got it. And hopefully they will come to themselves. They will wake up. And that would be... Uh, that would be how I would address that when people don't want to hear about God, they don't want to hear about the Bible. Just love them with the love of God, though they don't even know that it's coming from that source. All right, next question. Barbara on Facebook, why does love have to suffer? Now this is from 1 Corinthians 13, I'm assuming, uh, where it says love suffers long. Suffer is just a different word for long suffering or being patient. We could easily say, uh, love is patient. Love isn't based on feelings or circumstances. Uh, love doesn't come and go. Love is patient with those that are perhaps unlovely, whatever, and they're, they're more difficult to love on a human level. But the God kind of love is patient. The God kind of love will wait. The God kind of love will pray for them. The God kind of love will expect them to come to themselves also in whatever they're going through. And so that's what it means uh, to dump you the minute there's a, a, a disconnect in the, in the relationship. Love is going to, to be patient with you. All right. Next question. Rocco M. on YouTube. Uh, what would Andrew recommend? to someone who thinks God doesn't love them because they can't feel it. Is the love of God more than just a feeling? Absolutely. In spite of how evil, how wicked the earth had become and man mankind had become, God has chosen to love us. He's chosen to love you. He's chosen to love me. In spite of our behavior, in spite of everything that we do, if, if God were to move by his feelings, we'll say, in this area, he could feel some pretty negative things perhaps toward us but love transcends feelings. When we begin to only think of love in terms of feelings, feelings come and go. And so now you're dependent upon feelings as to whether you think someone loves you 
or whether you think you love someone, or this, we could translate this over into church settings where people feel like they have to feel the presence of God or feel the love of God to believe that it was a good church meeting. And when you begin to limit yourself to feelings, you start to walk in unbelief because you're no longer walking according to the word, you're walking according to your sensations. Well, your sensations aren't a good measure of what's going on in the world of the spirit. And so love isn't a feeling. Love is a decision to choose to live by the spirit, to walk in the spirit, to give, to bless, to forgive, uh, to, to be patient, to be long suffering, as we talked about, to have self-control. All of these things are choices we make, not feelings that we necessarily have. Now, there may be feelings that can accompany some of this. But whether there are feelings or not, I don't base what I'm doing on feelings. I base it on what the Word of God says. And I choose to give, I choose to bless, I choose to forgive, I choose to have patience with, with people or with uh, circumstances because I know that God is love and God is patient with me. God is, is choosing to love me and I can therefore choose to love other people. All right, so don't let feelings lead you into unbelief. Don't measure relationships by feelings. Measure them by how you have chosen to, to be the, the uh, channel of God's love into someone else's life. All right, next question. Uh, Ann, A-N, or on, on chat. How do you show love when you have negative emotions toward a person? Okay, again, love is not an emotion. You choose spirit over flesh. Emotions, I have emotions, you have emotions, we all have emotions. But you can't be driven by your emotions. You can't, you can't live your life based on that shallow uh, approach of how something makes you feel or someone makes you feel. And if they don't make you feel good, you reject them. If they make you feel good, you accept them. That's not the, the Christian life. The Christian life is based upon choosing the spirit over the feelings, over the flesh, over the emotions. In Galatians 5.22, very well-known scripture, the fruit of the spirit. It says, but the fruit of the spirit, if you're born again, you have the spirit. And if you're born again with the spirit, you have the fruit of the spirit. It's in there. It came fully packaged, fully equipped. It's all in you. The fruit of the spirit is love. That's the God kind of love. You have the God kind of love. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. You have joy in you. Peace, long-suffering, patience, kindness, goodness. You have kindness, you have goodness in you. Faithfulness, and gentleness, and drumroll, self-control. You have self-control. It's all there. Sadly, so many choose to not draw on the Spirit. They prefer to live according to the past according to their flesh, according to their emotions, according to their sensations, and they relate to the world around them on that very superficial, shallow level. The question is, how do you show love when you have negative emotions? Uh, it's a choice. I have chosen to forgive situations in which my emotions were not in tune with my choice. But once you make that choice and once you begin to pray for people that have hurt you, uh, Matthew 5, 44, pray for them that, dis that uh, despitefully use you and abuse you. Uh, you become their intercessor. You forgive them. You choose to forgive them. You may not feel like forgiving them. But when you learn to live from the Spirit, you get set free from so many bondages, so many chains of living in the flesh and of, e of evaluating every relationship based upon today's feelings and yesterday's circumstances. That's not how to have successful, abundant life relationships. We have got to learn to live by the Spirit of God. Romans 5.5. 5. Romans 5.5 5 says, Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God, the love of God has been, past tense, shed abroad or poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Every single Christian, born again, you have the love of God poured into you. It's there. It's a love for you, and it's a love that wants to be expressed through you. It's there. You can forgive. You can be patient. You can choose joy. You can choose peace. 
you can choose all of the different fruit of the Spirit. It's all in you. And you say, well, Barry, I don't know how to do that. I just, I, I, I get emotional, I, get, I fly off the handle, I get this, I get that. Uh, I had to learn. I had to learn as well. But I started making conscious choices that in this situation, I could yell or I could not yell. Okay, I'm not going to yell. But I really want to yell, but I'm not going to yell. And so there would be that back and forth. But I would choose, okay, I'm not going to yell. Where in this situation, I can be really upset and I can make some decisions that hurt someone. Or I can forgive. Okay, I really am upset, but I choose to forgive. But I'm really upset, but I choose to forgive. And I would learn to choose the fruit of the Spirit, the love of God in my heart. And the more I have chosen those things, the easier it has become to where now that is my default response. I don't get upset. Getting me frustrated takes a lot. And even then, I may be frustrated, but I'm still going to choose to respond with kindness. I'm still going to respond with the love of God. It's a choice. It's a, it's a walk with the Lord that is going to uh, take perhaps some time. But that's where self-control comes in. You have that too. Self-control. You can do it. Amen. All right. Uh, next question. Nathaniel Porter on YouTube. Can it be envy if you want the same type of relationship with God that another person has? Can that be envy? I, I guess it could. But listen, none of us are going to have the same exact relationship with God that someone else has because we're all different. We're all unique. We can all have our own unique fellowship relationship with God. Uh, my relationship, my fellowship with God is going to be based upon where I am at this point in my Christian growth. It's going to be based upon my maturity level. It's going to be based upon my giftings. It's going to be based upon God's call on my life. It's going to be based upon my personality to some degree. So my relationship with the Father is going to be different than your relationship with the Father. Mine is different now than it was 20 years ago, 40 years ago. And so those things change. Relationships with people change. Over time, they may dissipate. They, the, the person may leave your life or other people may come into your life and never leave your life, and that relationship will grow and evolve and change over time. So rather than be envious of someone else's relationship with God, develop your own unique, personal, one-of-a-kind relationship with the Father and enjoy that. Amen. All right. Next question, Elaine on Facebook. Is it all right to ask God to manifest his love toward me in a tangible way. Okay, Elaine, not wanting to hurt your feelings, but he already did. And his name is Jesus. That's as tangible as it's going to get. Jesus is the tangible manifestation of God's love. The fact that you're wanting something else is, is really a declaration that the word isn't good enough for you. You need a feeling. Well, you're going to get into unbelief. If you can't keep having continual feelings, then what? What happens then? I have the word that I can stand on regardless of my feelings. I know God loves me because it says God loves me. And it says it over and over again. God is love. And God uh, first loved me. First John 4, 19. Well, I'm on the wrong question. Okay, let me go back to your question, okay? These all kind of run together. Uh, but Jesus is the love of God manifested. And so... Tangible, he walked uh, among us. Now, I, I understand what you're saying, that you want to have a feeling or you want to have three dreams and a vision or something. I don't know what it is exactly you're looking for. But you've got all of that in the Word. See, when we, when we don't want, when the Word isn't good enough, that's when we start getting into problems and we're, we can be deceived because feelings can come from different sources. Feelings can come from your flesh or they can come from other spirits. Feelings aren't the way to, to evaluate how things are going with God. You evaluate the word, you by the word. And know that if God said, I love you, for God so loved the world, and you're accepted in the beloved, and he's made you a new creation, and he's made his abode in you, John 14, 23, uh, all of the verses that talk about his love, 
he's not given you a spirit of fear, but of, of power, of love and of a sound mind. That's not good enough. I think it is. I think it is. And so we need to get our, our thoughts and our hearts off of the idea of feelings, emotions, tangible things. And we need to believe God's word. This word is alive. It's not just ink on a page. It's alive. It carries the power of God, the healing power of God, the delivering power of God. It carries the love of God. Uh, it's, all, it's all in the word. And so I would adjust what you are looking for and get back into the reality of walking by faith. Okay, next question, Queenie. Queenie on YouTube. How can you expect God to shower his love if you can't love others? Well, great question, but it's backwards. Okay, God has already showered his love on you. Now you are equipped to love others. And so it's not that, well, I can't love others, so how can I expect God to love me? No, 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 he already loved you first. And that's where I was going. First John 4, 19, we love him because he first loved us. Well, we could change that a little bit and say, we love others because we've been loved first by God. He did the, he did the first loving. He sent Jesus for us, the tangible expression of his love. And now because his love has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, we are fully equipped to love, to forgive, to give, to bless, to be patient, to, to lift people up. We are fully equipped. It's all in there. You did not come missing anything of, of the presence of God in your life. Now, you may not feel it, but it's not a feeling. It's a reality, and it's a choice to live there. You have to choose to walk in the spirit or walk in the flesh. Those are our choices. Okay, so God so loved the world. He loved you. You got born again. You received that love. He poured it into you. Now go out and love others. Go out and love others. You can do it. All right. Next question. EJ, E-J-A-Y, EJ. Does God's love mean that you have to walk away from diffi a difficult situation in favor of peace sometimes, or does it mean you must always stay in a bad situation? Okay, so that's, that can be a little nebulous there. And there's not enough information for me, but uh, what are we talking about? Are we talking about a marriage? No, a marriage is a covenant that you've entered into before God. So you don't just walk away from a marriage. Marriage requires mutual love, but sometimes one part of the marriage is not walking in love and that's why the other one who is walking in love realizes love is long-suffering. Love is patient. Love has self-control. Love is kind. Love keeps giving. Love is able to... Now, once you get in the flesh, that's where conflict comes from. But if you can stay in the love of God, the other person is going to be ministered to by the love of God. And the seeds of love will produce a harvest of change in their life. And so if we're talking about a marriage, no, you don't walk away from a marriage. Now, there's other aspects there. If there's physical abuse and danger, that's a different subject. But I'm just talking about conflict. Uh, you, the love of God is more powerful than that on your life, and you need to, to end that relationship. And so there's a lot of variables in this question. If we're talking about a job situation, uh, you've got to determine if, if it's toxic uh, if it's a church situation, is it toxic or is it blessing you? So there's many different facets to this question. So the question again is, does God's love mean you have to walk away from a difficult situation in favor of peace? It depends. Sometimes, maybe. Or does it mean you must always stay in a bad situation? Well, it means you need to evaluate the situation is it a covenant in the eyes of God? Is it a ministry? What is it? And then you determine what God, God's will is according to the word of God. And you walk in the love of God in that situation. Amen. All right, we'll do one more. Uh, Ruthie, Ruthie on chat. I think the saddest thing about this world crisis is that many Christians have lost hope and forgotten God's word it is because they haven't, is it because they haven't had a revelation of God's love? Uh, perhaps we could start there, yeah. I think uh, I'm surprised at how many Christians are, 
are uh, frantic and really traumatized by what's going on right now. And to me, it's a, it's a revelation of how shallow the root system is perhaps in their life. We can go to Mark, Mark 419, where Jesus is talking about the parable of the sower. And he says, in the cares of this world, the cares of this world, and then he goes on to add some other things, but then he gets to the, the conclusion, the cares of this world choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. And so if the cares of the world are choking your peace, choking your joy, choking your love, choking your will to live, then it means there's, there's a very shallow root system there. We need to be the tree, Psalm 1, Psalm 1, planted by rivers of water, bearing fruit in season, no matter what comes our way, Christians need to be the example of being unshaken. Uh, Psalm 112 talks about the righteous man. He will not fear evil tidings. And so that, that needs to be our, our goal, our point of, of reference, is that we aren't going to be shaken by what's going on in the world. And if the cares of the world are choking the word or choking your victory, then that's kind of a, a red flag that you need to go deeper into your fellowship with God and, and get that straightened out. Amen? So that's all the questions we have today. And uh, tonight, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, Andrew will be here with Carrie Pickett. They'll have another great live Bible study with you. And uh, I won't be here next week, but someone will be taking my place. And we will see you then. God bless you. Have a great day.